Welcome to the fourth video in our tandem queuing um, system module. And in the previous model, sorry, the previous video, what we looked at was uh, looking at capacitated buffers and experiment uh, controls and how we use reference properties to facilitate systematic uh, experimentation. In this video, what we want to do is a very basic animation. So note that we have a full module going through all of the details of animation. And what we're doing in this video is just going through and doing a very simple animation of our tandem queuing model. So what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change the symbol associated with my default entity. And so what I'm going to do in order to do that is I'm going to select my default entity. Then I'm going to go up to my symbol ribbon and I'm going to click on download symbol and then Simeo brings up 3D warehouse to let me select an appropriate symbol so I'm going to just search for UPS box I want my tandem queuing system to represent a, a packaging line and so I'm just going to select this one right here and when I download uh, I get a view of the box that shows me what uh, the box looks like it lets me rotate if I want to look at that um, if I want to look at the box in 3D, so it's going to let me look and say, is, you know, is this the box I want? And it is. So I'm going to click download. And now we're bringing that symbol into Simeo. And Simeo is going to say, OK, well, tell me a little bit about this box. The first thing is scale. You can see our reference person here. So this scale is uh, pretty big. I don't want my box to be quite six meters in length. Instead, let's make it half a meter. And so uh, then it keeps uh, scale. And so uh, let's make it a little bit smaller. Let's make it 0.33 for a mid-size UPS box. And then it also spec specifies the forward direction that we want to use. So that I'm good with that. So I'm going to go down here now. And then here's my symbol. So if I look in 3D, we can see that we have just attached that symbol that we just created to uh, our default entity. And so now when I run, I'm seeing instead of the triangle, the default triangle, I'm seeing my UPS box. And so adding symbols to the entities uh, is a very straightforward process. The next thing I want to do is I want to change the way the symbol looks depending on what state of processing it is. So in order to do that, I need to add a symbol to the symbol list. So I'm going to go up to my, again, my symbol ribbon now that I have default entity, entity selected. I'm going to add a symbol. And when I do that, we see that our active symbol uh, button is activated and it says we have two symbols. So we have symbol zero, which we had previously, and we've added symbol one. So I'm going to now select symbol one and then simply change its color. So let's change its color to red. And so now we have two symbols. We have symbol zero, which is the default brown. And then we have symbol one, which is the red color. So when I run my model, we're not going to see any difference yet because we haven't told Simeo when to apply the new symbol. So all we've done till now is we've created that additional symbol in our symbol list. So what I want to do is go after server one and I want to say I want to change the symbol to represent processing at server one. So I'm going to select server one and then go to my state assignments and before exiting, so after it's been processed, I'm going to add a state assignment. And the assignment that I need to do is my model entity picture and give it a value of one. So our symbol list has two uh, items. It has element zero and element one. And so when I assign this model entity dot picture state a value of one, the animation will then select the second symbol when it moves over uh, as it exits server one. So we can see we have the brown entities coming in and then we have the red entities uh, departing. And so we can see how that's specified. If I go back to my default entity, my animation 
the property current symbol index is specified by model entity dot picture. And so whatever value that's taking on at any point in the simulation, that's the symbol that will be used. So by default that has value 0. And then when the entity left server 1, I simply added that or gave it a value of 1. I could do the same thing when it leaves server 2. I could change the symbol index as it you know, arrives at server 1 and begins processing and so on. The basic idea is that I need to add new symbols to the symbol list and then specify in the model when I want the symbol to change. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a symbol for server 1. So the same way that I look for a symbol for the default entity, I'm going to select server 1, go back and download symbol, and this time I'm going to search for shrink wrap. So we're going to, the first process in our tandem queuing system is going to be to shrink wrap our box. Let's, uh, let's look at this one right here. So we look at this one. This looks like what we want. So we entities come in and then they get shrink wrapped and they leave. So let's download that symbol. And now again, we're going to specify the size. I want the forward direction. Let me rotate this. I want the, well, this looks good. This looks fine. So entities come in here get processed and then they leave and this length looks a little bit big for a shrink wrap so let's let's bring this down just a little bit let's do 1.5 uh, let's do 1.4 that still looks a little bit big how about one we'll just try one meter that looks reasonable for a shrink wrap of you know for a medium sized box so I will then place that and now you can see that server 1, uh, the symbol has been replaced by our 3D model of the shrink wrap. And so when I run my model, now we can see the entities are being processed or the, the symbol has been re replaced. Now one thing that we have to see it, to improve our animation is the processing station. So we have the processing station here in its default location. What we really want is that processing to happen right here. So we want the boxes to come in and then be processed here. So what I'm going to do is go back to 2D mode and I'm just going to move my processing station like so because we're modeling in 3D the easiest thing, at least from my perspective, the easiest thing to do is to position the station in two dimensions and then switch to 3D and simply move it up. So I need to move this over just a little bit. I can do this as it runs and then go to 3D mode. And in order to move in the Y direction, I simply select my whatever I want to move, in this case the station, processing station, hold down the shift and I can move it up. And so now we have our processing that's happening right in the processing station, uh, or right in, uh, in the animation where the processing occurs. So go back to 2D mode and there we go. Now we have a nice uh, shrink wrap. We're shrink wrapping the boxes. The boxes then leave. And let's do one final thing. Uh, first of all, let's switch our connectors back to paths. I'm sorry, let's switch this connector from a path to a conveyor. And so what the conveyor will do is it conveys entities. So now the entities will uh, move along a conveyor uh, from the source into the shrink wrap machine. So I'm going to go back to select our conveyor and then I'm going to add what's called a path decorator. And so that lets me specify or that lets me add an animation component. So again my 3D animation component to the conveyor. Let's slow this guy down a little bit. And we can see boxes moving uh, along the conveyor into the input buffer. Let's go back and set the input uh, buffer uh, property to zero so they can't wait. So they'll just sit on the conveyor. So now boxes move down the conveyor when space is available they move into the processing station and so if we speed up the run we'll see that entity that the boxes stay on the conveyor until there's processing capacity available and in the third video this is what I was talking about when I said we wanted to change from paths to com to connectors because it uh, the paths act as uh, as a uh, 
uh, as buffering capacity. So we can continue tweaking the animation uh, and so I could go and move the input point so the input point is closer to say the actual input point so we can just move that up there and then move the output point here I guess we didn't change this one to pat to conveyors but we can do that switch this guy to uh, uh, convert to type a conveyor and then go ahead and add the path decorator here and now when I look in 3d make sure everything Let's go ahead and run the model so we can watch it. Of course, it doesn't look quite right because I have this uh, part of the machine here. But as you can see, it's relatively easy to tweak the animation and get it to look exactly uh, like like you would like. In this case, the, the, the path decorator or the conveyor decorator that I chose is a standard uh, two meter conveyor. And so I would want to probably tweak the box size a little bit or use a different uh, path decorator. But at this point, I will uh, stop and let you continue. You should experiment with uh, the model again. Uh, use a different symbol for the server too, maybe a little labeler or something like that uh, to make the animation uh, look even better. But the key things here to take away uh, is this notion of a symbol, uh, symbol list for the uh, entities and the ability to download symbols from 3D Warehouse. If you watch the animation module, you'll see these uh, things in much more detail. And the animation module also talks about uh, creating symbols uh, and symbol lists uh, yourself.